Good morning to viewers, it's the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange for British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Now we've got something most interesting and indeed historic. Uh, and his master's voice record of probably about 1910 or 12, pressed in Calcutta and recorded in Madras. And it's called Jalga Rao's Journey to England, spoken by Mr M. Bruce Gordon of Madras. Now, he's satirising um, a sort of particular type of Indian who were prominent in the Raj, they were sort of wannabe middle class, and they were known as Babus to people like my grandparents in the uh, in the Raj. And um, I don't suppose many people have heard of them today, but they're a bit, a bit like a sort of Indian Mrs. Bouquet. And this chap satirising them, this must be the first sort of recording of that sort of thing. A sort of Indian music hall act, really, I suppose. Anyway, I don't know who, you know, would have bought such a record, whether it be the British in India or the natives, I don't know. But uh, anyway, we're going to hear it now. My name is Jagar Rao. My father's name is Raghunath Rao. I, I went up for my BA, BL. I passed off anyhow. But after I passed my examination, my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, all had formed the resolution <laughs> that I should go to England. Go to England now, what is this? But of course, there was a four against one. Hence, the odds were tremendous. Therefore, likewise, accordingly, it behoved me to give in. For taking our second class railway compartment at Kumbakon, of which I may mention here is my native country, and being rather fatigued with the arguments I had had with my parental relatives, it behoved me to fall into the deepest of slumbers. But how is it possible for a man to sleep in the Indian railway train? What would these barbarous station fights? Why, on arrival at that horrible station, Villapurum at 2 a.m., there was the porter at one gone to the platform yelling, Villapurum! 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 Then came the other horrible barbarous station cries. How is it possible for a man to sleep? Therefore, I did not get here in the sleep till I arrived in the dark, Egmo, railway station. There, having spent the time to breathe, I went straight off to the steamer, and that evening the ship said, say, Arre, what I can say for that? Ship is going this way, that way, Jagarov is going this way, that way. But I was beginning to feel miserable. Rather than saying anything, I took myself to phone the taken with air people feeling miserable. And a gentleman comes up to me. This is our BAB and the high court. You certainly must drink some of this. He had some yellow stuff in a bottle and he was pouring it out in a tumbler. Sir, please excuse me. You said this silly length, I cannot force take effect as an adramant. Nonsense, nonsense, Mr. Sagara. You certainly must drink this man alive, you will die. <laughs> Look at the alternative. Well, of course, rather than dying, I will immediately power to the bed. Arr, 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 what I can say for that? Guru will make him, Guru will make him, ship is going round and round, crew is going round and round, gun, moon, stars, everything is going round and round. But, a strange feeling having breath over me, I seemed rather glorified in the idea of that I was not to die. And taking myself by another form of the death, I was there, he glorifying in this idea. Then another gentleman comes up to me. Mr. Chagra, the idea is better than the highest court. The dinner gong has gone long ago, and you have not been down yet to your dinner. Pass, excuse me. I am suffering from too much sick. It is impossible for me to partake of food. Nonsense, nonsense, Mr. Chagra. Man, if you do not eat, you will die. <laughs> Another alternative. But of course, rather than die, I immediately went down to the saloon. And there passed it to my chair. A gentleman, evidently, the steward has brought me up something on a plate. This being rather palatable and having far taken a food, I call for more. After I did the second part of the other, the man told me to sleep. So please don't tell anyone about it. I mean, I will lose my part. Well, I journeyed to England, covering from the so forth and the etc. And on arrival there was a Mrs. Robinson by name. Her husband was formerly carrying the the fourth nerve carry department in India. And both he and she were great friends of both my paternal as well as maternal relatives. So this is how I reached England after suffering from the greatest of torments. Well, I hope uh, I hope someone will be able to do a translation of that, or indeed a transliteration. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye.